The Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes, which I'll call CW3E, was created to help address challenges with Western water management because we have such big extremes in wet and dry. So what we've seen in this past 10 years in California is what people call climate whiplash. We've seen extreme droughts, some of the driest periods on record, followed up by some of the wettest periods on record. In the weather business, there hadn't been enough attention on that, in my opinion. So I came here to Scripps Institution of Oceanography to try to build up capability to do the research to understand the storms that provide the water that we depend upon or the floods that we try to protect ourselves from. So the Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes is this really great dynamic between research partnerships and applications. And so one of the things that I work closely with a team that develops the research is understand how it can be applied for water management and make the information more usable. One of the big challenges for California and the West Coast in managing water is that a ton of it comes in just a few storms each year. Those storms are atmospheric rivers, and they form over the Pacific. And when they form up over there, there's usually not as much measurements as we have for storms over the continent. That is the purpose of atmospheric river reconnaissance, is to capture, measure, and feed that into the forecast models to better predict atmospheric river landfall on the West Coast. This is analogous to what the nation has done for decades for hurricanes in the southeast and eastern U.S., where aircraft exist in the U.S. fleet of weather reconnaissance capabilities in both the U.S. Air Force Weather Reconnaissance Squadron and the NOAA National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration uh, has aircraft as well, and they use them for hurricanes. So atmospheric recon, reconnaissance, what that means is that we use an aircraft, we use a high altitude jet, it can fly up to 42,000 feet. So when atmospheric river systems are coming across the Pacific, CW3, working with NOAA scientists, identify where they need us to fly and collect data. So we'll fly in front of those systems, we'll fly around those systems, and we'll collect data using the aircraft. The key sensor that we use in AR Recon is this. It's called a drop sound. Sound for sounding or profiling, drop because we drop it from the airplane. Parachute comes out the end, and it floats down over about 20 minutes from about 40,000 feet above ground to the ocean surface. And it radios back with sensors in here temperature, pressure, moisture, and wind back to the aircraft. Once it gets to the aircraft, it's then sent by satellite to a big data bucket used for weather modeling all over the world. Another thing CW3 has done is they have made this information accessible. They have developed nomenclature, they've developed language, they developed a rating system that makes this information accessible to everybody. Our website, I think, is something that does that really well in terms of our forecast products. CW3E is running a regional model over the western U.S. that's called West Wharf, and that model is really focused on capturing atmospheric rivers and forecasting those better. So one of the strong connections is through forecast and form reservoir operations, and so it's this idea that water managers who have to decide when to hold water or when to release it can use forecast information to understand what they should do. With the tool that the center has developed with us, we've done a final viability assessment. We can actually show that we can store 10% more water behind the dam in a way that's safe. And that's enough water for 50,000 people for a year, every year on average. And so that's gonna greatly expand our water supply security and resiliency in the, in the basin and really produce a tangible benefit. We're also now exploring the potential of Firo at reservoirs in other parts of the country. It's a very carefully done process and we use scientific rigor to ensure that our results are solid. And we work very closely with the water management experts, the engineers who are exploring this possibility with us. Historically, the Corps of Engineers and other dam operators have used rain falling on the ground and reacting to that rain and how they're gonna manage the reservoir. Bureau says, well, why not use what forecasting is showing us and what's coming and adapt our operation based on that new information. I think one of the major strengths of the center is the collaborations that we build with forecasters, with water managers. So it's a very nice matching of the applied and the science that we're able to bring together. The relationships they have really inform the need for the data and the value of the data and it it allows that data to be applied in the most effective way because they know exactly what it's needed for and, and what's missing or what's working. The center has grown quite substantially in the first 10 years, which is very exciting. And I will say one of the things that 
I think it's most powerful about the center is the great people that we have working in the center and that we get to work with in the larger water management community and also forecasting community. In coming here 10 years ago from a federal agency and starting a center at a university, one of the goals was to explore how to educate a new generation of young people in the possibilities that science creates to make the world a better place.